I, I think there's a few people from MAPC who should be joining shortly. Yeah, well, you're going to outnumber us, so. <laughs> It, it, it's a it, it is okay because because it's taped you know they can go back on youtube and check it out so all is not lost definitely and I, everything we're presenting and talking about is going to be emailed afterwards so you know it is totally fine oh there's clark coming in that's great yeah yeah i i, I must say what most of the other meetings i don't catch live i catch them on youtube you know after the fact so well, my suggestion is you get a life. <laughs> well, I'm on the treadmill when I do it, so I'm, I'm double tasking. Okay. So, yeah, oh, that's yeah. Good. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> oh, and there's Mike. Okay, we're going to actually have our usual compliment. All right. Hi, Clark. Hi, Mike. Hey, guys. Hello. All right. Good. Most of them all. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> I'll order the meeting of the Zoning Bylaw Committee for May 6, 2024. I have an alphabetical roll call. Who's here? Clark Brewer here. Tom Callahan here. Uh, Michael Dickey here. Uh, David Farag here. I know Jack is at a selectman's meeting. He's going tonight, so he won't be here. Um, <clears throat> As far as the committee goes, um, you got some materials today about the forum we're going to conduct about the articles or forum slash more presentation. Uh, that'll be next Monday night. It's going to be by Zoom and live. Um, and Cassandra did a great job with the presentation and nice graphics and stuff. I really appreciate that, Cassandra. Um, and then, You're welcome. you know, <clears throat> not planning on any other meetings before town meeting. There's really nothing for us to deal with. But tonight, we are looking towards the future. <clears throat> we have MAPC with us. They are the consultants uh, we have retained to help us work on new uh, climate-related initiatives for the bylaw. And included in that is they were going to review our Article 14, which is the floodplain protection bylaw, and Article 9, which is the watershed protection bylaw. And I believe you're here to give us some info on one or both of those things tonight. So whoever is leading from MAPC, I'll turn over the floor to you and uh, go at it. Um, great. Thank you, everyone. Um, why don't I go ahead and share my screen? Just give me a second. All right, great, we'll get started. Um, so my name is Avanti, um, I'm with MAPC, and we're here today to specifically talk about the floodplain and watershed district bylaw, that's part of Cohasset zoning language, and we're gonna talk about how we can update it. Um, just a quick agenda overview of what we're thinking about doing. Since we don't all know each other, I thought we could just do a brief round of introductions. Uh, then we'll just go into an overview of what this project is, why MAPC is here, you know, the process and the framework we're going through. Um, we'll talk about, you know, the timeline between now and December and the different deliverables you can expect from us. And then we will try to reserve time at the end for questions and discussion and conversation. Um, if you can try to hold questions to the end, that would be great. And as I think I mentioned previously, all of the materials you're seeing today, including the framework we're gonna pull up, that is all gonna be emailed to you guys after this meeting for your careful review. So don't worry too much about taking notes or anything. Um, so I already mentioned, my name is Avanti. I'm a senior regional land use planner here at MAPC. And I'll just kind of popcorn it around, maybe kick it off to Radoshi to just briefly introduce herself. Hey everyone, my name is Radoshi Sina and I'm an environmental planner at MAPC. It's good to be here, thank you for having us here. Um, I'll pass it to Molly. 
Hi, everyone. I am Molly Shea. I'm a senior environmental planner at MAPC. Um, I apologize. I have my video off and I will mostly remain on mute. I will be here taking notes for the team. I am currently on um, solo mom duty tonight while my husband is presenting at a select board meeting. So apologies for um, my video and things being off, but I have a toddler next to me. So uh, <laughs> thank you for giving us this opportunity. Great. Um, Tom, do you want to just popcorn yeah. around to you guys? No, for us? Okay. Uh, Tom Callahan, I'm chair of this committee and as well as the planning board, um, attorney by trade, including real estate and land use stuff. So, Clark. Hi, yeah. Uh, my name is Clark Brewer. A bit, I'm a registered architect. I've been on the planning board for 17 years, uh, chairman of our master plan committee that completed in 2019 with the help of MAPC. Uh, I was 10 years on the South Shore Coalition MAPC uh, and vice chairman of the 2004 master plan, as well as a variety of other committee assignments in town. Well, Mike or Dave, either one of you jump in. Oh, I thought, uh, uh, had you already spoken, Tom? Because I thought, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I sure. Well, I guess I'm next in alpha uh, uh, alphabetical order. I, I'm uh, Mike Dickey. Uh, I am a member of the um, Cohasset ZBA. And uh, I missed a meeting one time, and they uh, elected me to be the ZBA's representative for this committee. So there you go. <laughs> How about that? Your, your, your enthusiasm is noted. <laughs> uh, Dave, David Farag, attorney by trade. Um, and I've been, I was on the Conservation Commission for over 10 years and was chairman of that. And I'm on, I'm on this committee and I was on a couple others. And, and I'm also running for selectmen. And so far, it's unopposed. So hopefully, I'll be a newly minted selectman in June. And Cassandra, awesome. what, Cassandra, tell us about yourself. <laughs> I think everyone here knows me, uh, but for the record, I am Cassandra Thera, the town planner for Cohasset. Thank you, Cassandra. And yeah, okay. appreciate you being the one to bring all this together. <laughs> um, great. No, thank you. It's helpful for us to know who's in the room. Um, so just to kind of dive into a little bit of the background behind this project, um, really, MAPC is here to aid you guys, the Zoning Bylaw Committee, uh, as you guys are working towards comprehensively reviewing your zoning bylaws. We're really here to aid in that. Uh, I believe last year, the town received state funding from the Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs to work with us specifically with regards to the floodplain and watershed protection district. So that's the main focus of today's meeting and today's conversation. And we're specifically trying to make sure that the language in the floodplain and watershed protection district bylaw is compliant with the Massachusetts model, which I will get into now. Um, so the 2020 state model it's basically just a document that the state put together uh, for Massachusetts communities so that they could compare the language in their bylaw with the model language that the state has set up that incorporates all of these different requirements from the National Flood Insurance Program. Um, and the re required language that's gonna be part of this bylaw is particularly crucial for Cohasset, not just because it's a coastal community vulnerable to flooding, but also it's required for participation in this program. So, you know, without participation in the National Flood Insurance Program, Cohasset residents won't be able to purchase flood insurance policies, the community's flood hazard areas won't be eligible for certain federal grants or certain federal disaster assistance. So, again, it might the, as we go through the changes, it might seem a little tedious and very specific, but it is really important that the language uh, exactly complies with what the state model and what FEMA regulations. So 
I thought we today we could just talk a little bit about the framework that we're using to actually do that comparison between the state and the town. And in a minute, I'm actually going to exit out of the slideshow and Radoshi is going to share her screen and we're going to walk through, you know, these different items that you see in front of you. But basically, the framework that we set up is on this right column or sorry, on this left column where it says the state model bylaw sections. We have the sections and the languages listed out, and then we actually try to identify if that language already exists in the town of Cohasset's Article 9, which is the Floodplain and Watershed Protection District. And, and when we pull up the framework, you'll see that certain cells are highlighted in green, yellow, and red. Uh, the green cells mean that that language is already incorporated, so we don't have to touch or do anything there. Can I agree? Um, can I interrupt yeah. for just a second? Just so you know, we have both an Article 9 is the Watershed Protection District and the Article 14 is the Floodplain Overlay District. We, they're, they're separate, just so you're aware of that. Okay, that's good. We are looking specifically at Article 9, which I thought was titled the Floodplain and Watershed Protection District, uh -huh. but we'll double check that. When we first did the scope of this a few, maybe two months ago, we, we talked about both of those uh, articles being part of your scope of work. Hi, Tom. Yeah. It's, it's Molly. I'm going to, I'll interject here. Um, so we were, we went back and we're looking at what the um, MVP action grant was for the town for this work that we're part of that, that, uh, and that is only for the floodplain and watershed protection district section. I, but I'm telling you, there are two different articles in our bylaw. They're not one article. But anyway. Okay. Well, well, that, that seems like a pretty important, pretty important point. I, I mean, well, so it, it, it may be, it may be that what what they show us needs to be done would replace both of our exist, both existing Article Nine and existing Article Fourteen. Um, the one thing about Fourteen, I know it has a laundry list of uses that are prohibited because it's in a floodplain. You know, and we can we can certainly incorporate that stuff in a different way. But uh, w w let's see what they come up with and what the model by what the model looks like, and then we can deal with that. But it may, we may be replacing both of them with one new thing. What okay, I, what I, I as you're going to kind of see shortly, a lot of this language already exists in your zoning, and it exists mainly in Article Nine. Um, if we feel like Article 14 like needs to kind of get more incorporated or there might be language to add there or edit there, we can certainly talk about that between now and our second meeting with you guys. But for today, we, at least up until this point, have just focused on Article 9, which it does look like, again, as we go through language, that seems to be where most of the language exists already. So even in your town zoning. So just a quick well, thing. Oh, 14 wow. is a water resource district, which is, and nine is a uh, floodplain oh. and water. All right, I, I had them back. Yeah, it's, I had them slightly back. different, but I think you're on, I think you're good. Yeah, you know, my apologies that I had the two backwards, which was rich. But... So I just want to start, Mo it's Molly again. Cassandra, can we just clarify the MVP action grant was not for Article 14. It was only for Article 9 for floodplain and watershed. Protection district, not for Article 14 water resource district, which is your wellhead right. protection zone one, two, A, B, C. All right. Yes. That's so the, the grant funding is strictly to look at Article 9 only. Um, it's not to look at Article 14. Okay. Understood. Oh, so I am going to actually stop sharing. The other, the other technical thing I want to tell you is that if our changes in the structure of the bylaw go for, get passed on June 3rd, Article mm -hmm. 9 is going to become a section of a new Article 9 rather than a standalone article. So when you're renumbering things, it'll you'll, you'll see it. It's all been written out, the existing bylaw into the new format. And I'll share that with you so that when you go to actually write text, you'll conform it to the new organizational structure, not the old one. That would be great. Thank you for letting us know. And if you could share that with us after this meeting, yeah. that would be really Yeah, I've cool. already put it all together into the new format with all the existing language. Great. 
Um, Radoshi, if you're able to share your screen, uh, you can go ahead and pull up the framework. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Sorry, perfect. my screen acted weird for a second, so I am just <laughs> adjusting. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. So, all right. Um, so this is a framework that we're using to kind of go through our comparison and just keep in mind as I'm walking through this and I'm going to try really hard to just be as brief as I can as I go through these different items. Um, because I know it's really hard to kind of do this in like a Zoom meeting format. Just keep in mind that this is a first path. These are by no means our final edits. Of course, there are going to be certain things that like we as a consultant don't know about your town. Maybe you intentionally worded things a certain way, and we need to make sure we're understanding that and being cognizant of that um, so that we're not changing something that's actually uh, has a specific legal importance for the town. Um, so let's see. Just going into the first section, that is pretty straightforward. It's just stating the purpose of the floodplain overlay district. And if you look at the left in the Cohasset column, um, you'll see that it incorporates all those points. And that's why we highlighted it in green, because there's really nothing to change there. We can leave that alone. If we move to the second section, that is looking at the use of FEMA maps and supporting studies. That is just basically ensuring that the zoning language is correctly referencing the flood insurance rate map, the firm, and the flood insurance study. And again, if you look on the Coast Hasset side, you'll see this language is pretty much already incorporated in the second section of Article 9. And the only reason we even highlighted it as yellow is because of that small edit where we're changing it from a 100 year to a 1% chance base flood elevation. Those basically mean the same thing. It is a very small edit that is not fundamentally changing the meaning of that section. Um, and honestly, as we go through this, that's what a lot of the changes are like. They're more technical and grammatical, but it is important just to ensure compliance. Um, the third section uh, discusses the designation of a community floodplain administrator uh, for Cohasset. Under Section 16 of Article 9, you already designated that responsibility to the building inspector. Um, we can always talk about that if you want to change it, but that is good to go, and we highlighted it in green. Uh, section 4 states that permits are required for all proposed development in the floodplain overlay district. That same language is incorporated into Article 9 as well, with just one word change, again, not fundamentally changing the meaning of this section. Section five states that all necessary permits must be obtained. Article nine also essentially states this, which just again, a few technical edits. Uh, if we go into section six, this discusses the floodway encroachment. Cohasset has two parts of their article nine under the general provisions that uh, addresses this. Uh, that first sentence, that first item, is just talking about the data that'll be used to prohibit encroachments in the floodways. And that is consistent between Cohasset and the state model. The second item is talking about what those encroachments are that will be prohibited. And the only noteworthy change here is that in the state model, they actually kind of get more specific on the type of engineering analyses that uh, would need to happen for a development to not be prohibited. Um, Cohasset zoning language doesn't get that specific. So we would just include that specific specificity. We would just mention, oh, you need hydraulic analyses in order to prove that a development could exist here, something like that. So again, not too big of a change. Section seven discusses how to use unnumbered A zones to evaluate construction or development in those zones. And Cohasset's language is consistent in the state model. So that's highlighted in green, no changes there. Uh, section eight talks about adequate drainage paths in zones AO and AH. So for Cohasset, we just need to add in zone AH into the language. 
Section nine discusses how subdivision and development proposals will be reviewed in the district. Uh, for Cohasset, Article nine outlines that same review process for subdivision proposals. The state, I think, would just want to also see this review process extend for development proposals as well. Section 10 discusses base flood elevation data needed for subdivision proposals. And it is the same language that's reflected in Article 9. So that's highlighted in green. We're good there. Section 11 discusses the placement of recreational vehicles in special hazard zones. Same thing, Cohasset already has that, we're good there. Section 12 discusses the protection of dunes. For Cohasset, we'll take out the reference to just zone VE and extend that protection of sand dunes across the district. For section 13, that's just discussing who to notify for water course alterations or relocations. And the pro protocol listed here is exactly what uh, is described in Cohasset's articles. So that is also green and good to go. For section 14, this discusses the requirement to submit new technical data that shows changes to the base flood elevation in special flood hazard areas. Um, and in case anybody doesn't know, the special flood hazard areas, those are areas with a 1% annual chance of flooding, which basically means in a 30 year mortgage, there'd be a 26% chance of that area flooding. Um, just as I'm throwing that term out, I wanted to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, and with that particular section, section 14, it looks like we're making a lot of changes here, but really we're actually just updating the address. Again, pretty technical. Um, on section 15, we section 15 is discussing the variances to the building code floodplain standards. That also pretty much aligns with Cohasset's language already. We're just adding that the granting of a variance will not result in victimization of the public, um, which I don't think will be a controversial phrase to add. Uh, section 16 discusses the requirements for variances to local zoning that is related to community compliance with the National Flood Insurance Program. Again, this is language that's already existing. We just have to add that victimization of the public phrase. Um, for section 17, that states that the regulations we're listing out here will take precedence over any less restrictive conflicting local laws. Um, with just minor edits, that is basically the same thing that already exists here in Article 9. Section 18 disclaims that the degree of flood protection is considered reasonable and doesn't imply total flood protection. Article 9 already states that in green and section 19 discusses that if any part of this bylaw is deemed invalid or unconstitutional by a court, the remainder of this language still, sh still should be in effect, already consistent with what's in there. So those are the 19 sections. It is a lot of green. Most of this language is good to go. And again, the cells that are highlighted in yellow, if there's anything you took away from what I just read, they're relatively minor changes. Um, there is another component of this. And Radoshi, if you scroll down to section 20, um, that's labeled local enforcement. So this is a point that's not uh, necessarily showcasing required language. The state of Massachusetts didn't model out language for this requirement, um, but it is a requirement from the National Flood Insurance Program. And basically either through zoning or building or other ordinances or codes, you just have to make sure that this floodplain bylaw is legally enforceable. Um, typically for most communities, um, according to the state enforcement is, already addressed elsewhere, either in building codes or in other codes or in the Article 9 floodplain code. We're fairly confident that Cohasset's not going to have a problem with this, but on our end, we still do need to look through and make sure that, you know, if FEMA comes knocking and, you know, asking if you guys can answer these questions, you know, the language exists somewhere for you guys to be able to answer those. So, if you keep scrolling, the other portion of this are definitions.
for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through all the definitions. For the most part, they are all compliant. I think there are two definitions that it's not even that they don't have the same language, it's that they have additional language, and we just have to make sure that's okay with the state. But otherwise, everything should be good there. So, Radoshi, I think you can exit, and I'm going to reshare my screen. Avanti, while you're doing that, I'd just like to um, mm -hmm. share with everyone that um, Martin Pillsbury from MAPC has has entered the Zoom. Um, Martin, if you just want to introduce yourself really quick while she pulls this up. All right. Thank you. Sorry for being late. I was actually caught in traffic going between home office and elsewhere. And it's uh, Martin Pillsbury from the um, Environment Department, the director of that department at MAPC. Thanks, Martin. Glad you could join us. Um, and yeah, if again, if there's anything you got away from, to, you can take away from what I just talked about, it's that Cohasset has actually done a really good job of complying with the state model and the revisions that are there are relatively minor. Um, with that being said, we still have an extensive review process to kind of go through just to get that approved. So in our contract, we've kind of agreed on three meetings with us, this team, to review the framework and findings. The meeting we're in right now is considered the first of the three meetings, so we would meet two more times. Um, we also will take our findings and take this draft language to the state and get in touch with the state coordinator from the National Flood Insurance Program for their review. And then uh, later in the summer, early fall, we'll have a public forum presentation not necessarily to solicit feedback, but just to inform the community on what this bylaw is, the changes we're making, which again are fairly minor. Uh, and then we will also have select board and planning board meetings before we go to the town. So this is a high level timeline uh, that looks a little intimidating at first glance, but I'll walk through it and again, going to email these slides to everybody here at the end of this meeting. So you'll be able to also look at it and make sure um, it's a schedule that you think is reasonable. But basically, if you can see my mouse hovering, we're right here in meeting one between April and May. So we've presented the framework. And between meeting one and meeting two, we're going to email you all of these materials. The hope is that you can review our changes and this is the time to email us back and let us know like, hey, you missed this or actually there's a reason why, you know, it's worded this way. I don't know if we should go with the state, uh, the state ban. So we can, you know, have those conversations between the first meeting and the second meeting. We'll kind of do that via email. Radoshi and I will keep refining the bylaw. And so hopefully by the second meeting, we kind of have a final-ish draft of you know what we could submit to the state, which we're hoping to do sometime in July. And we'll need to give the state some time to review the changes we've made. So hopefully, you know, during late summer, as the state is reviewing what we've submitted to them, um, we'll start to prepare for a public forum. And in terms of like the logistics of how this public forum is gonna work, how it's gonna be structured, um, you know, what the outreach should look like. We will coordinate with you guys and with Cassandra, uh, you know, to make sure it's a meeting that makes sense. Uh, that'll kind of be in August. And then assuming the public forum and the state review um, goes smoothly, we'll kind of have a final draft that will uh, present to the select board and the planning board in fall. And we'll kind of get it ready for a state where we can bring it to the town meeting in December for a vote. So that is an overview of the timeline. Um, and in terms of next steps, like I said, we'll be following up with an email between now and July. This would be like the time where we'll try to kind of solicit feedback and make sure it's in a place where by July we have a finalish document that's ready to go to the state. With that being said, I think we can now open it up to conversation. Radoshi can always pull that framework back up if we want to talk about specific points. If we want to go back to this timeline, we can talk about that too. Um, just want to open it to the floor.
temporarily stop sharing my screen so we can all see each other. All right, anybody on the committee have any questions? I'm, it's pretty yeah. seemingly straightforward to me and I'm actually pleasantly pleased we don't have a, a lot of edits and we can bring this forward in the fall town meeting. Yeah, it seems like uh, you've said that we were in pretty good shape, and and um, I, I I think that in terms of the edits, I'm, I I think it's possible you could streamline the process a little bit I, from what you're proposing. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I saw I, Tom I, roll his eyes. No, but, I I'm, I'm in the middle of getting what I want to send to them about the new format of the article. Um, I'm doing it simultaneously. I, I think it's, you know, particularly in the summer in this town, um, it's going to be difficult to do anything. Um, but I don't know that we need that many public forums about this. Um, you know, for example, we're bringing forward, what, seven articles for the June meeting. We're having a forum next week on all of them. That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. We did our planning board thing. We go to our other boards, uh, you know, the zoning board, the select board, the advisory committee. We do our thing. Um, you know, this isn't super complicated. And I think it's an easy sell to the town that it's just a lot of housekeeping to comply with state law and make sure we qualify for flood insurance. I think those are the critical issues that people are going to be concerned about. So. Um, you might you might want to keep some of the meetings in your pocket um, because definitely with with the zoning board you're going to want you know maybe a meeting with them as well. It could be a joint meeting or something like that yeah, uh, to yeah. talk to talk about it. So I, I wouldn't necessarily put them on the cutting room floor, but you know just see see how it goes and how they're how they're being taken as they go through the process. Yeah, and, well, I mean, I guess follow, one clarification that I had. Did you mean the zoning bylaw committee or did you mean the zoning board of appeals that you're going to have three meetings with? Cause you said you were, we, this one counted as one cause they're different yeah. boards. And I think the ZBA might be interested in yeah. uh, the changes uh, on the, on, and, and have an ability to drill down on the language to see if there's something that jumps out at them or not. Yeah. Here's what I would suggest. In well, that was a question, Tom. Yeah, no, all right, go ahead, go ahead and answer. Yeah, I think she means the bylaw committee because that we're the ones I guess. quarter, I think, quarter I think so too. Yeah, we're the yes. ones quarterbacking yes. this process. So yeah. So um, yes, I'm gonna have the meetings. The yeah, with the zoning bylaw committee. Obviously, this is like a high level overview of what they have worked on to date right. with the intent that at one of the other meetings, we can invite ZBA members who yeah. want to attend to come to that meeting and have a discussion as a group. Yeah, I think you're going to, you, you know, you'll have meetings with us during the course of the summer to show us, you know, what progress you're making and, you know, updates and things. Um, I will want to run this to town council, the final product or the near final product before we do anything else. So that, you know, for the December town meeting, we have to pretty much have the text finalized, believe it or not, by mid to late September. And then in the September to December period, that's when we conduct our planning board hearing. We'll, con you know, I, I, I would agree to talk to the select board earlier, you know, like August, July, August, so they know what's going on. But um, uh, the, uh, you know, then in the fall, but, you know, in September when we have the language, we conduct the planning board hearing. We go have a review with the zoning board, with the select board to get their vote to put it on the warrant and endorse it, the advisory committee. Um, and then, you know, we do a public forum probably in November, but, and probably just one, again, because this isn't rocket science. And I can just tell you that forum attendance in this town is pitiful. So it's not even going to be worth our while to conduct multiple forums. I can assure you of that. Avanti, um, could you bring up the timeline just so we can confirm? That what Tom it sounds correct in what Tom's saying with what we had on there with having um town council do the review after the state did the review before yes. it went to the select board. Um yes. so, so I just yes. thought we could look at this real quick while you're explaining. I think you're can you see it? Yeah, you're going to have this near done in July when you send it to the state because again, it's not a lot of radical change. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then exactly. and then and then before 
mid-September, we'd have town, you know, hopefully the states finish their review. They were pretty quick with the MBTA communities one. Um, we get it to town council. And then, you know, I, I think the timeline, we'd probably do our planning board hearing early October, and we're using October and November to go to the other boards and get their endorsement. And the public forum would fall within that, you know, late October, November timeframe. Because you're not, you're not going to get a lot of that heavy lifting. That sounds good to me. I, yeah, you're I not going to get a lot of heavy lifting during the summer. And, and you know, and I understand, too, the bylaw committee is going to have another slate of potentially, you know, five to seven articles for the fall. You know, the, the, mm -hmm. leftover, the leftover things we still have to deal with to finish the reform of the bylaw. Um, so, you know, the, the tension will be somewhat diverted. And again, I don't think you, you, if you were doing a completely whole new something that we haven't seen before thing, that, that would be different. But this isn't radical change here. And I think it's going to be easily understood by everyone. So I, I don't want to over overthink it or over, over plan for it. I, I completely agree. And as far as moving the public forum, I think, like, again, I think you guys know your town best and what'll work best. So that sounds good to me. I definitely, Molly, Martin, or Radoshi, if you have any opinions on that, I'm curious. But um, everything you're saying, Tom and Cassandra, about incorporating, uh, you know, the ZBA maybe at one of these meetings just to make sure they're in the loop as well. That all sounds good to me. Oh, yeah, they're, they're always in our loop, but, you know, mm -hmm. and they have a yeah. member on this committee who, you know, Clark, Clark and I, Clark he's and very I, willfully here, right? Yeah, he's very willfully here, but I'm sure he reports back on what we're up to, as just as Clark and I do to the planning board and our other select board member and our hopefully new select board member will report back to that board so that nobody's really in the dark during mm -hmm. this sort of process. Um, so. Yeah, I, I think a, a meeting on that, you know, the, the state review is going to be a really big point in the process. So, you know, coming out of that, of what, what they say, um, you know, might be helpful at that time because, I mean, people can quibble about language, but when it goes through their review and then, of course, our town council, that that's yeah, that might be the, the point to look at. I mean, they can always come in earlier to at least see what the drafts are, uh, but I, I think that that's going to drive it because if someone has a has an issue with any of the language and that, then that's what the you know, it's going to conform with the state review. Well, there you go. You know, there's not much to talk about at that point. So uh -huh. <clears throat> the zoning board of appeals, no offense, Mike, but they're the traditional nitpickers of language. So that, that is correct. <laughs> and so uh, we should get it to them sooner rather than later. But somebody no has reason. to do that, right? right. Somebody and has to have that role. There's, there's no, there's no reason though that everybody can't uh, see this as we're going through the process. Um, you know, so anyway. The, the other um, person you may want to consider looping in whether or not is sharing the draft with them or inviting them to one of these meetings is, I believe it's your building official is your designated floodplain administrator. Um, and so as they're the one likely, you know, on the line for compliance with this with the state, it would be good for them to review the changes as well. That's that's probably makes a lot of sense. Um, and he usually participates in the bylaw committee meetings from time to time and planning planning board meetings. So. And I don't see that we would change that. I don't. There's probably no provision in, in the town budget to hire somebody else to do this role. So, you know, he's going to he's going to continue in that role for all intents and purposes. We have some we have other communities and that tends to be the role that is the the staff role that's designated to that position so yeah now, and he is aware that we're undergoing these changes so um i had planned to share any draft language with him now, let me ask um again going back to the scope of your work is it just this or i i i was under the impression in fact incorrect impression that you were possibly also going to look at other new stuff the state is up to about climate resiliency and climate preparedness, you know, the impacts of climate, like with completely new bylaw material. Is that 
an incorrect uh, impression about what, what you're going to be doing? Was it, I would say it, that it, that is an option that was co contemplated in the scope. And so that would be if there's interest in the town and, you know, go above and beyond. Uh, you know, the first thing is to make sure we have your P's and Q's and you have a legal bylaw and no yeah. one looks their flood insurance. But beyond that, while we're looking at it, there could be some add-ons, some new measures that you okay. could think about. It. And I guess I would just say that um, if that's the, the course you'd like to take, um, we should probably try to do that as early on as possible because those would all get merged into the same eventual approval in the fall period with all the different meetings. And yeah, approval. well, and then that goes back to when you originally talked about having a work product ready for the Springtown meeting next year. Cassandra, right. what's, what else is going, there's something else going on with multiple boards involved. I went to one meeting about flooding and, you know, coastal resiliency and stuff in the, particularly in Cohasset Cove. Is there some other effort going on towards perhaps looking at completely new bylaws to deal with climate change? No, that I'm aware of. Okay. I, th I thought we were at some meeting with you know, Tanner and Concom and CZM. And, okay. CZM, um, our grants had had a few public meetings that were geared towards the study that we did. Um, yeah. And then now we are kind of in the implementation phase of what that study found. Um, but I don't believe any part of the implementation involves changing of the bylaws. Okay. All right. Good. All right. That helps. All right. Anybody else on the board have any committee have any questions? I, I don't. I think this is excellent. And again, I'm pleasantly surprised we're not that far out of whack from what the state wants us to have. I, I was just going to say the only thing was is the uh, terminology in the first one you brought up of uh, going from the hundred year uh, to the one percent of occurrence is that is that is that because so the model can change you know as the, as the one percent um, you know you can, can sort of a uh, hundred year in other words is more static than the than the one percent so is it was that the thinking behind that because the hundred year seems to be more than a hundred year yeah so this is the new this is how fema is um this is actually will be on the new flood insurance rate maps as well which will be there in referenced with this update that's kind of another part as there's one section of the update will that will have the new flood insurance rate maps i'm sorry i have a toddler talking um but okay. they have changed the language instead of saying um the 100 year flood and the 500 year flood they're calling it a one percent chance and a 0.05 percent chance mm -hmm. annually so that you're having that annual chance of it happening being more you know um yep. i guess realistic than saying oh it'll only happen once every 100 years so yeah i think i think that's something when we get through it beyond the zoning board is maybe we can uh, pass it along to the CONCOM as well, because they, they they deal with that and it always pops up, so. All right. All right, All right. So, so next, um, I'm just, again, I'll work on it tonight. I'll get it to Cassandra to send you what this article looks like in the new format that we expect to pass at the town meeting. It's just renumbered, that's all. Um, and then, so you're looking at a meeting when to come forward with some revisions or whatever else? Yeah, we're we're thinking sometime in July. And so we'll be in touch on, you know, scheduling that. And we'll be talking with Cassandra, um, you know, to figure out what makes sense with everyone. And if, if we want to maybe invite others to that meeting, um, that would be probably a good time to do it. Well, and we can we can talk about that. We always do. They never come. <laughs> All right, that's good. Um, if we have nothing else, then I guess we're we're set for tonight. I appreciate everyone being here. Um, yeah. No. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, and we will definitely be in touch soon. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you for the presentation. Yep. Thank Hi, you. Nice to meet thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Okay. Uh, Tom, you want to? Well, everyone's leaving, so I guess we can't do. Let, yeah, no, no. We, I, uh, you can adjourn. do a motion. You've got yeah. three. Yeah, there we go. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second it. Second. All in favor, roll call, please. Mark, we were aye. 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 aye.
Tom Callahan on. David Farag guy. And Mike's still here. Or did he leave? Mike left. He okay. left. All That's right. Okay. And again, uh, the, the the forum is next Monday, six thirty, hybrid or live. Um, yeah, we'll be there. It's been put. It's been put out by an invitation on Facebook, and you know, a lot, some people are responding that they're going to come. You know, but it's still in the single digits, so uh, we'll, we'll see. And we're just going to present them all, and I'm. I'm going to take them out of order and lead with the MBTA one. And, you know, I'm just hoping that the, you know, the publicity on Facebook about what Marshfield did, you know, isn't, you know, there, there's yet to be any opposition expressed in Cohasset to this on Facebook or elsewhere that I've been aware of. So it will be interesting to see if what has gone on nearby is going to impact anybody. But I'll lead with that one because that's the most potentially controversial one. But. Uh, again, Cassandra, thank you. You just did a great presentation, a great slide presentation that you put together. Um, so, so we'll see thank everybody. You. We'll see everybody Monday, and then after that, it'll just be a town meeting. Yeah. Oh, I'm, um, I'm, by the way, I am. I'm supposed to be. I forgot about it until I looked at my calendar before I left. I'm supposed to be an advisory on Wednesday. Okay. So Tom, if you're planning to lead with MBTA, if you want to just look at the slideshow that I sent you and kind of figure out in which order you want to do things, I can rearrange the slides. That yeah, way just, just, it can yeah, just, just be flipped through and it, yeah, you don't just have put, to bounce around. Okay, yeah, just put the MBTA one first and the others in the order that they're going to be. Okay, I can do that. And, and by the way, guys, it's a great presentation too. It'll be a perfectly ready slideshow for town meeting as well. It's it's, it's really well done. So um, we'll we'll be all set. I still don't. I still don't know where we are on the warrant. I, I think we're. <laughs> I think once again we're further back, but that's okay. This will this will go oh, fairly quickly. There seems to be a little jockeying on the uh, article, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I I haven't checked what they're up to. So, all right. Thank you all. See you next week. Good night.